Hello, PEI. I'm Louise Martin. The chief public health officer today confirmed a second case of COVID-19 on PEI. Wayne Thibodeau joins me in studio with the latest details. So, Wayne, tell us more about the second case on the island. That's right, Louise. Well, Dr. Heather Morrison has been warning all along that there would be another case, and today was the day. It's a man in his 40s from Queens County, Prince Edward Island. It's travel-related. He came to home from the United Kingdom. At this point in time, he's exhibiting only mild symptoms. But Dr. Morrison said this stresses the importance that people follow her recommendations and self-isolate following international travel. And we have some updated numbers today, right? Yeah, that's right. Well, as we said, we have that second positive case now. We are starting, though, to get some of those test results back from the National Lab in Winnipeg. 122 cases have come back negative. Some good news in all of this. We're still waiting for test results from about 89 people. Now, while we're talking about numbers, Dr. Heather Morrison had a dire warning for Prince Edward Island and a bit of an explanation on why we are going through these extreme measures. Let's hear from Dr. Morrison. If we look at what we know about this coronavirus and the mortality rate, if that was to happen in PEI, there would be 3,000 deaths. And it reinforces to me why we need to make these kind of measures that we're taking here in PEI as well as around the country. Now, Dr. Morrison was not trying to scare anyone, she said, when she talked about those potential 3,000 deaths. What she's doing, though, is trying to reinforce why she's putting those, putting those measures in place and why Islanders, Louise, need to take them seriously. And health officials today also gave us an update about uh, services, Wayne. What can you tell us about that? Yes, that's right. I think a lot of Islanders are questioning what happens if they have a health issue other than the COVID-19. Well, it's important to point out that the emergency departments at Island Hospital still remain open and are still treating patients. Those needing cancer care or diabetic care are still accessing services. Those are all still going ahead. Now, there's also been an issue with regards to ventilators. These are machines that help people breathe when they can't. Many jurisdictions across this country are saying they do not have enough. The situation is no different here on Prince Edward Island. We have 15 ventilators at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital, four at the Prince County Hospital. The province of Prince Edward Island has made a request for 15 more from their supplier, and they hope they can get those soon. One other point I should raise, Louise, is the province is also looking at expanding the ability to test. They're looking at exploring those drive-through testing like we've seen in the U.S. Now in the U.S. there's been these massive lineups because anybody can go get tested if they have a sniffle. Well here it would be a little different. People would have to call 811 and then they would be directed to some of these drive-through testing sites where literally you would sit in your car and get your nose swabbed. The other option they're looking at is community paramedics doing some testing in rural Prince Edward Island. And what about uh, liquor stores? That was a big topic of conversation uh, yesterday when we saw those lines and some criticism really from the public health officer, but there was some further clarification on that today. Well, that's right. Dr. Morrison's actually apologized after what happened yesterday. She said it was not her intent to see those massive lineups. And as you said, she literally said that she was disappointed in Islanders' reaction. Let's hear from Dr. Morrison. I've worked with many islanders with alcohol use disorder and we recognize that alcohol use disorder alcoholism and impacts many families uh, on uh, pei and alcohol withdrawal is a danger so we would never leave islanders without access to um, alcohol so we need to point out corporate stores now closed as of two o'clock today, but agency stores and breweries will remain open. And I'm told the province will have an announcement either later this evening or first thing tomorrow morning where they will announce more details on how Islanders can access alcohol and one of them might very well be delivery service. Dr. Morrison today, Wayne, had some advice as well for people who are still working front lines um, and not talking about healthcare workers here. We're talking about coffee and grocery clerks. What did she say? 
Yeah, that's right. When we think about frontline workers and essential services, we think about healthcare workers first and foremost. But in this case, Dr. Morrison said those grocery store clerks are an essential service and they are all at work right now today. So she's reaching out to the grocery store owners to talk to them on how they can help protect their staff. We have to remember, these are staff members, many of whom are making minimum wage, and it's very difficult to distance yourself if you're in the checkout. So they're ensuring that there's hand washing stations throughout the, throughout the uh, grocery store stores and that people use tap rather than cash so you don't have to have that personal interaction. Now customers can help out themselves by only sending one family member to the grocery store rather than the whole family, making sure you keep that two meter distance from many of the workers in the store and if you're sick you don't go. Yeah I mean they're doing good work there, important work keeping food on people's table at this critical time. Very so uh, you asked Dr. Morrison for a timeline. This is a question that she must get all the time. Just how long could all of this last? Yeah, you know, Louise, this is one of those questions that as a reporter you want to ask, but you're almost scared to hear the answer. And that's exactly it. Everybody wants to know. We're in the middle of this COVID-19 crisis, but at the same time, how long is it going to last? Well, unfortunately, Dr. Heather Morrison, the island's chief uh, public health officer, said she just doesn't know. But what she did say, if we act now and we act fast, we can shorten that timeline. All right, thank you so much for this update, Wayne. I appreciate it. Wayne Thibodeau reporting tonight. And watch for daily updates from us here at CBC PEI on social media and online as we continue to deal with the COVID-19 pandemic.